the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him, Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him, Jesus, and for him. Jesus. How does it make you feel? Your creation. I was created by him. Yeah. And I was created for him. Oh, Ooh, yes. Thank you, Lord. And he Jesus. is before all things. And by him, Jesus, Jesus all things consist. Yeah. And he Jesus. is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he Jesus. might have the preeminence. You know what preeminence means? Superiority. Be first in rank. For it pleased the Father that in him Jesus. should all fullness dwell. Woo! And having made peace through the blood of his cross, Jesus. by him Jesus. to reconcile all things unto himself, Jesus. to by him, Jesus. I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you and me that were sometimes alienated, and enemies in our mind by wicked works. Yet now has he, Jesus, reconciled. Oh, oh, my hands go up in worship to the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. In the body of his flesh through death to present you and me holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. What a name. What a powerful name. So I'm going to sing this for the Lord. And I'm so thankful I got one of my high school buddies here. And I'm so glad you got to come, Vernon, and bring your, your family uh, from school. And, and it's so wonderful to know that he's trusting in the same name I am. He's got a church down there in oh, Atlanta, Texas. And it's wonderful to know that we can all, no matter where the body of Christ is, on the four ends of the earth, there's one name that can unite us all and save us all. That great name of Jesus.
sensitive this morning. Whatever the Lord is speaking to you, just let him go ahead. Speak in your hearts. We'll wait upon the Lord here for just a few moments. Savior, we love you. We thank you that you come for such a time as this. We thank you for your word, Lord. We ask you that you would, you would speak in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we can be obedient. You lean over in our presence. Love us. So double. say, Lord, I want to be one of those receptive vessels. Lord, to be used by you. Oh, we thank you for your love relationship with the human race, for your willingness to forgive us. And Lord, thank you that you didn't call us just a warm up human, but to shake the bushes, Lord, and let everything that comes out be called by God. Then around to the fullness and the presence and the whole
While you're turning there, and while Sister Leatherwood's getting us up on the screen, or getting the word up on the screen, we're going to be looking at verse number 14 where we'll start. We're going to have a special service the first day of next year. That will be this coming Wednesday. We're going to have four 
different segments. It'll, th this room won't be, they're, they're going to be working on it from, from the way it looks. We'll have it in the fellowship hall, and there'll be room enough for everybody. Yay! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> going to be great. We're going to have, uh, we, we normally have uh, four, four or five classes. I think we're shooting for four. I don't think Brother Justin will be, be back by then. I'm, I'm not real sure of that. But anyway, uh, we're going to have four 15-minute segments and, and let you get an idea of what goes on in the kids in the lighthouse, what, what goes on in the uh, amps, the junior amps, what goes on in the amps, and then what goes on in the, in the main class. And so we're looking forward to that. It'd be a little fifth, uh, uh, four 15 minute bites. Okay. Yeah, there's probably a word in, uh, in the computer uh, system for that. But anyway, you, you, won't, you won't, what was it? Can I make an Sure. While Brother Danny's announcing that, uh, Tuesday, for all the ladies in the church, the boys are not allowed, I'm sorry, but um, we're going to have a girls' church lock-in, and so everybody is welcome that is a female, and we're just wanting to come and have some fun, but mainly the Lord really laid it on my heart for us women. Uh, the Upper Room Revival, they celebrate the year with some sort of little party, and, that, and they're a bunch of little prayer warriors. And so what better way to bring in the new year than in prayer? And so at 11 o'clock, we plan on having some praise and worship, whatever takes place at that point. I don't know. <laughs> but we plan on having some praise and worship for a good solid hour and then just praying in the new year. So um, young and old alike, mamas, babies, please come and join us because um, I believe the Lord's going to meet us. And we're going to have such a precious time and we're going to have a special... Uh, devotion time, and so if you can come and you want to be part of it, please do. Okay. 7 o'clock Tuesday. Start 7 o'clock Tuesday evening. All right. Thank you for those announcements. Uh, they was getting after somebody for making announcements during the service, and one of the older gentlemen, uh, the ministers, uh, made a statement. He said, well, don't never leave the, the announcements out. That's our step of faith. That's telling the devil, we ain't closing the doors. We're going to have church next week. <laughs> and said, Get ready. We're coming back to the house of God. I, thought, I love that. <laughs> okay, here we are. In Job chapter 33, we're going to start reading in verse number 14. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. How many has ever been there? Sometimes he has to grind on me a little bit. I said, I, I heard you that time, Lord. He said, I've been talking to you for about it. Come on now. Okay. In a dream and a vision of night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. Is God talking. Then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. So that his life abhorreth bread and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to shew unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. <coughs> His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his faith with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon me, and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. He will deliver his soul from going down into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man. 
to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Lord, thank you for your word. We ask you, Lord, that you would divvy it up into our spirits this morning in a way that it brings change to our lives, and for this we'll ever be grateful. We thank you for speaking to us already, Lord, and we ask you that these words, Lord, would go forth in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're having our last few services as we plummet downward at a very fast rate at the close of this year. Whatever you do in this year, you don't have many days or hours. There's no weeks left. Between now and Tuesday night at 12 o'clock is all we have left of this year. And it's went by to me just like a it went by fast. People's life, the Lord talks about people's lives being like a vapor. They're here for just a moment and then they're gone. It's not uncommon for humans, that's what we are, to spend their lives so nine old that they miss what they're really put on this earth for. God put us here to be a manifestation of Him, that people could look at us and see Jesus. Not us, not what we're talented to do that was given to us by God anyway, but to see Christ in us, that that would give others the hope of glory. This passage of Scripture uh, I've uh, went over and over in my heart over this many times, but there's a caption in, in verse number 23 that really spoke to my soul uh, for this morning. And as we're closing this year out and getting ready for a new year, if we could set standards in our walk that right here it could be. You know, when I, when I first got saved, I wondered if people, and, and I'm, I wasn't trying to disallow it, but I'm thinking from the side of my mercy what I would do if somebody did me like that. If people on deathbed uh, repentance, if they really made it to heaven. And I know that that's all about the heart. But when I found this passage of Scripture in Job 33 as a young minister, it opened my, my heart up afresh that God, He loves people so much, He's willing to go with them right down to death's door through sickness, through affliction, through trials, through tribulation, trying to get them to slow down long enough to recognize, I need, I need to get right with God, to recognize I'm going to hell if I don't change. And, and in the midst of this, the whole, the whole scenario of it, there's one thing that has to happen. And that's written down in verse number 33. I'm sorry, verse number 23. If there be a messenger. And friends, there's none of us that can't talk. If you don't think so, look at the Facebook and look at the text and look at the telephone. I don't do Facebook, but I mean, from what they tell me, it's just out there you can find anything you want to. You can, there, come on now, somebody, surely you're still in there alive, yeah. What about setting aside in your spirit and be in mind what we can do that we would put into writing or put into words or put into Facebook, whatever you're using to talk to other people, that we would become the messengers, the messengers of the Lord. Now here's God dealing with me. He said, oh, he can save me anyway. I'm going to tell you, friends, Sid, Sid was uh, giving out a message, uh, what he felt the Lord was speaking through him. And friends, it ver it's verified by the Scripture that Jesus Christ is not going to save this world without us. If he was, he wouldn't need us. He wouldn't even need the church. But he has called every one of us to be the messenger to that person. It's not about whether you ever stand on the stage and do pulpit ministry or teach a class or whatever. What it's about is being a carrier and being so, um, I want to say toxic, but that's not the right word. What, what is it whenever when you have, you're sick and, and anybody gets close to you? Oh, that's the word right there. Not toxic, but contagious. <laughs> I've been toxic before. Come on now, Lord, please forgive me of that. But to be contagious, that what you have, people catches it. Ah! That can happen. And look at the writer. How many is 
quoted Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 and verse number 13, jillions of times. Yeah, that, that's, uh, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I mean, it's so precious. Verse number 13 talks about whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. saved. But I want you to look at verse 14. And that's where I'm preaching from this morning. Romans chapter 10, verse number 14. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a carrier, a messenger, a preacher? That's our call right there. How's it going to happen if somebody don't spit it out and say it? Yes, this is it. Woo! And so I want to talk to you about this morning. Um, two, two things, I've, I've got two titles here I'm trying to get down in my spirit, but one of them is, is, is there a messenger out there? And the second one is that the ransom is ready. The ransom has already been paid. All we got to do is tell the people that you're paid for. Your sins are forgiven. They've been washed in the blood of Jesus if you'll just come and ask forgiveness. And in this, in this passage, the Lord is dealing with people that's hard-headed like we. I don't know about the rest of the world, but Americans are hard-headed. Their skulls are thick. And sometimes their hearts are hard. But you know what? The Word of God has a way of pressing down through there into, their, into the soulish man. And it may be a child or their song that touches your heart. It may be a grandpa or grandma that touches you. Or your mom and dad or a friend or just a stranger that you hear something from and that goes into your spirit. But the Holy Ghost is willing to lead us if we're willing to message. Yeah, we send lots of messages, T-E-X-T. -E Why not say, I'm not going to just send a message. I'm going to be the messenger for Christ. No, the ransom is out there. What would delay us from talking to others about Christ and, from, and for becoming uh, contagious for them? One of the things that I wrote down is, I'm looking this over, is the clock's ticking. How many, how many days do we have? What if we only had from now till Tuesday night to win our neighbor? Or to win our brother? Or to win our sister? Or, or to win the, the world where you're at, Brother Vernon? Or the world where I'm at it here in Snyder? How, how, much, how much longer do we have to have? And, and did you hear? The, it's verified in the scripture. Jesus is coming back. And the only one that's going to know him is the one that the messenger got to. Some of the saddest things you'll ever, ever read about is where the battle was over, the war was finished, and people still killing each other because they hadn't heard it yet. That really happens in war. Everybody don't find out the same time that the moguls that's sitting up there in the big seat doing nothing, uh, that, that the killing has stopped because they ain't told them the war's over yet. Friends, I want you to know the war has been won 2,000 years ago. And there ain't no need of giving in to the devil and let people slip off into hell when all we got to do is say it. I know one soul's in one waters, but man, let's go to praying God, Lord. All your, if all your needs a messenger, woo, Lord, let us be the one that carries us out there. The clock is ticking. Would you say it with me? The clock is ticking. When you think about a messenger or a friend or even a helper, the, the scripture talks about all the people he sends, but in that, which is not talked about very much, uh, the advances of pastors, all that, is also helps. H E L P S. Lord, I'm willing just to help somebody, somebody to step into the boat that wouldn't get in there. Lord, let me. If the Gadarene demonia can go back and evangelize his people, he ain't been to college yet. Somebody help me now. He's been to the college of the low downs and the kicked out, and he knows everything about Satanism and that stuff. But about Jesus, he learned that in about three shakes of a lamb's tail. And he goes and starts publishing. What's he doing? He becomes a messenger. And his life is just the message to see where he come from to where he's going. Woo! Power of the things of the Lord. We, we was at a graduation several years ago in Lubbock and the speaker there made a statement. I thought, Lord, let, let, let us come to this grip. He said, he's talking about love. He said, this community was not built by givers. It was, or this community was built by givers, not takers. 
man, we want to go to heaven, but don't you want to take somebody with you? And to do that, you've got to give out some of what's on the inside, pouring out of your life. That's got to, that's got to come into our hearts. I thought about Brother Dabney. He's, taught, he's been over to, to Israel and, and been to Jerusalem and, and saw the Red Sea. And he talked about, I think he said, the Jordan River runs right into the Dead Sea. And guess what? It's dead because it has no outlet. And all, all of that water just becomes salty and stagnant. We, we can't just have a church and say, okay, let's come and kick our heels up, you know, and enjoy it and go out and not say nothing. No! no! The messenger's got something to say. Well, how can they hear without who? A messenger, a preacher. Somebody's got to talk about it. Somebody's got to get it out there. Um, in those verses, Job, Job 13 through 18, he talks about, and then in verse number 18, he says, Because there is wrath, beware, lest he take the, this is Job 36 in verse number 18, because there is wrath, beware, lest he take thee away with his stroke. Then a great ransom cannot deliver thee. Well, what's that talking about? Did you know that after you die, it's too late to get ready? When we first got saved, they used to sing a song. You came one day too late. You came one day too late. You've been left behind to wait. Man, that sent chills up my back. It still does to think about people. Okay, I'm ready now. But after you die, it's too late. We've got to get ready now. We've got to believe God to help us get them ready before it's too late. Look at that scripture in Job 36, 18. Because there is wrath, beware lest he take thee away with his stroke. Then a great ransom. You know what that great ransom is? Jesus Christ. Even then Jesus can't save you because you waited too long to ask for repentance. And that's why the Lord's, before this man dies, he's looking for somebody that'll go to him and say, hey, look at the Lord, look at the sickness, look at the affliction, look at the problems, look at the trials. Why not turn now? And he needs us, me and you, to go and say what the Word's got to say to them. In chapter 33, back where our text was in verses 14 to 23, he talks about through visions, through dreams, afflictions, and even by ministry, he's trying to reach into people's lives. I, I think it's, I didn't look it up, but I think it's in the song of, no, it's not the song of Psalms, it's Ecclesiastes, I think. He says, as a tree falls, so shall it lay. You know, when I first read that as just a young preacher, I thought, man, that's... That's wild. And what he's saying is, I mean, this is just the natural way it happens. A tree that falls out in the forest, it lays right there and rots. Nothing changes it. If it falls to the north, that's where it's at forever. And what he's saying, he's using that to look at us. When you die in death, if you die on the wrong side of the fence, friends, you can't crawl through after you go to hell. It, it's over. I mean, you read, you read uh, what is it, uh, Luke 16, where the rich man and, 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 the, and Lazarus gives the story of them. One goes to heaven or one goes to paradise, one goes to hell. That, that rich man wants out, but he says, there's no road out of here. There's no way. Abraham's talking to him. There's a great gulf between us. You can't get out. Friends, our world needs to know that. That if you miss heaven, it's forever and ever and ever. So, pull up today. Just, uh, I guess it was, uh, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before yesterday. I, I was visiting with a gentleman. He stopped by the church here, and I hadn't seen him. He used to go to church here several, several, oh, it's been a couple of years ago, probably. Anyway, he said, well, I've been busy. I've been so busy. Well, how busy can you get? Is it busy enough to miss heaven? In that time, he's had two heart attacks, a stent put in, and uh, one, one medication, $400. I, I think he said a week, but I'm going to put it to a month. But can you imagine that much medication trying to keep him alive? And I said, and, and your word, what about church? What about God? I said, man, don't, don't miss everything that it's about. I said, if you die, you won't be in hell just 100 years. You'll be there for all eternity. Come on. Come on back. Yeah. Turn the corner. Run to Jesus. Jesus, ask forgiveness. What is there out there, friends, that's worth missing heaven for? Nothing, nothing, nothing. So he's looking for a messenger because the ransom is ready. It's already been put together. The payment's been made for us. The clock's ticking. God, let us do your business. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 26 and 27, he talks about a man. If he dies in his sins, he's eternally damned. I mean, you can't get by that. That's just, that's just in, in the Word of God all through the Scripture. Ezekiel 18, 26. We'll look at these two Scriptures right quick. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. 
There ain't hardly nobody in the world looks at these scriptures, friends, but us. But they're out there. That's, that's the way the life is. Look at verse number 27. Here's our hope. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. I mean, the mixture of the gospel is yea and amen. It's black and white. There ain't no, there ain't no gray in this gospel. He's getting it down to where we can see what it's really like, and he wants us to know that in our knower. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 11, <clears throat> here's a scripture that should drive us right down into the end of this year, knowing therefore the... Did you know, we talk about the love of God all the time, but there's as much terror as there is love out there. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we do something. Here's this messenger. What do we do? We persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. So God is asking us to look this picture over and say, Lord, if you need a messenger, I'm, I'm willing to be the one out there. And the terror, knowing that people's going to die and, and go to hell for all eternity, woo! Lord, let us step up to the plate and say, God, we've got to get this thing right the first time. Okay, we talked about the clock is ticking. Secondly, our sin demanded innocent blood. And here's the glory of the ransom of Jesus Christ. The word ransom means the redeeming or release of a captive by payment of money or compliance with other demands. Like a kidnapping victim. Here in Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 28, our sin demanded innocent blood and Jesus was willing to give it. We've got to be like him. We've got to be willing to tell the story. In Matthew 20 and 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. In, in the writing in our, in our text, in Job chapter 33 and verse number 24, he says, Then he is gracious unto him and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. Why? I have found a ransom. I found a way out for him. Friends, that ransom is real this morning. Jesus is in the saving business. I know our worlds are flipped over backwards kind of, but I want to tell you, all it takes to straighten them up is getting them to Jesus. Have you seen a turtle, you know, flipped over on his back and he's trying like crazy to get you to go along there and bump him over? I was talking to a man the other day. He was riding down the trail and he said, he watched this, he stopped and was gathered a pastor and he said, I stopped and this turtle just, he was trying and trying and trying, but he kind of got, got turned over and he just, he couldn't get up. So he said, I got off and turned him over and turned him loose myself. <laughs> Don't we have that much messenger in us? That Lord, we look at people that's so wrecked out and say, God, let us stop. Let us turn them up on their feet and let them head back for the altar. Woo! I was plowing several years ago on an open top tractor, but we had the first time. But we had we had conveniences back then. This tractor didn't even have a shade on it, but it had a radio. <laughs> I had that thing turned on on that tractor. I, it's a wonder you ain't dealt from just hearing the motor on the tractor, but that radio. And this preacher was preaching like crazy. A Baptist boy. Anyway, I love what he said. He talked about getting to church. He says, you come to church, you're a sinner. You're going to hell. You head down the aisle, going to hell. You get down there and repent, and you jump up, and you head back out, and you're going to heaven. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know why? The ransom's been paid. All he wants us to do is get them down to the altar. And it don't have to be in the church house. It can be behind the pickup or in the, it don't matter, on the front porch, anywhere you can find them. If they'll cry out to God, the Lord's willing to reach out to them and touch their souls. The writer talks about it in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. There's a ransom out there, for there is one God, the world don't like this, and one mediator between God and men, the singular man, Christ Jesus. There's nobody else out there. And if we get that in our business, friends, they're going to they're gonna say you're crazy, but man, what a message to carry, because you're carrying that message of truth. Look, look at verse number six in this same passage. Who gave himself a... Are you still in the building? Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due season. 
I don't know how you felt when you got saved, but I'll tell you, it was unbelievable for me. And what was so unbelievable is after I had been raised in church my whole life that the Lord still would stop long enough in a revival and touch my heart. I was the only one saved that night. This little woman I'm married to was saved the same night too. And we've been shouting, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ever since then. It's been a good trip. But somebody came to us and messaged us. Yeah. Poured into our lives. And man, what a great, what a great victory we have. Just, just like Jesus. The writer talks about in the, in the scriptures about Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. A symbol of what Christ had to become for us to go free. Can you imagine Jesus Christ, this noble Son of God, leaving heaven and becoming the snake on the cross? And the snake which represents the sin, our sins. He, he was willing to become that to set us free. Friend, you talk about a ransom. I mean, he stuck his neck out. He died in our place and rose again the third day to say that you got victory coming. Man, what a story for us to tell. And Job said what he's looking for in 23 is a messenger because the ransom is ready. The ransom has been paid. The third thing I want to talk to you for about for just a little bit is that the church is built on givers, not takers. The church that God has is built on givers, not takers. And God was the first one to step up to the plate. Would you quote it with me in John chapter 3, verse number 16? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You, you talk about giving. When you think about Jesus Christ being given by God Almighty and given a celestial being, being given into the hands of humanity and to desecrate, whoo, what a heartbreak. But he was still willing to give. You talk about giving. God stepped up and showed us what giving's all about. Look at this passage in Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 4. This is a little Christmas bite here for us. Galatians 4 and 4. <clears throat> To redeem them, but with the fullness of time, but when the fullness of time was come, who sent his son? God. You know what it talks about the rapture? In the New Testament, it says that even Jesus does not know the time that he's coming back to get his bride. No man knoweth the day or the hour, not even the son, but only the father. My friends, the father said, son, it's time for you to go down. And Jesus says, here I come. A body ha have, you, have you built for me. And here comes Jesus. And here it is in the scripture. But when the fullness of time was come, right on the mark. I don't know if we've got it right. But what we know is December the 25th. Right on the mark it goes, when the fullest time was come, God sent forth His Son made of a woman and made under the law. You know why? To redeem us. Wow. You talk about being willing to give. That's what messengers are all about. Friends, it's, it's not just about money and stuff. It's about your time. You've got to take time to pour into somebody else. That's what makes the difference. If you love people, you put something into them. You try, to, you try to build them where they can get away. And that's what God did. He was willing to put 33 and a half years into the human race by His own Son. He was killed. He rises again. What great joy He brought for us. God was a giver. The church was built on givers, not takers. God was a giver. Would you say it with me? God was a giver. Look at Jesus in, in John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18. These are wonderful verses right here to memorize because sometimes if you don't know the Scripture, you feel sorry for Jesus going to Calvary. But friends, He went of His own will. 
And if you ever make a messenger for God, or I make one, you've got to go on your own will. God calls you, but you've got to be willing to go. If he says you go, and I say I will. You remember the servants, or, or the dad that had the two sons? The first son, he goes to him and says, son, I want you to do so and so. He said, okay, dad, I'll do it. But he never went. The other son, he says, dad, I'm not going to do it. But he repented and went and got to... He said, which one of them is justified in the eyes of his daddy? Yeah, come on now. What we got to do is say, Lord, not only will I say I'm going, I'm going to get her done. I'm coming. And, and then we say, but Lord, they don't like me. That don't make no difference. They didn't like him either. But when they get saved, they'll love you then. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> My own brother, I don't know if he can hear me or not, man. He was... <laughs> <laughs> I worked on it. Like to scratch me, scratch my. Eye. Don't talk to me. But then there come a time, man. I couldn't keep him off of it. He said, "Ooh, it's glorious." Here in St. John ten verse seventeen. Therefore doth my Father love me, because what? I lay down my life that I might take it again. You talk about a giver. Look at verse number eighteen. No man taketh it from me. This one scripture here set me free. You know, when I read the end of each, each uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it, it breaks my heart what they did to Christ. But this, this gives me freedom here to say, Lord, thank you for willing to go through that. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it again. This commandment received I of my Father. And friends, Jesus willingly gave himself. They thought they was doing it. The devil thought he had it done. But Jesus had already in the garden given himself to the cross of Calvary. Not my will, but thy will be done. I found a ransom. Yes, sir. He's looking for a messenger now to give a distribution to this. The Holy Ghost also a giver in St. John chapter 14 and verse number 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now, it doesn't say the Holy Ghost is a giver here, but Jesus says that he's going to take of mine, and he's going to do something. What's he going to do with it? He's going to give it unto you. And friends, comfort, the comfort of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, is giving. That, that word by itself, it shows the comforter is somebody that's pouring into somebody that's not comforted. And that's the Holy Ghost's work, constantly giving out to us. One, one preacher made a statement about the Holy Ghost. He said, here's the work of the Holy Ghost. He reaches up there and pulls the curtain back and lets you see more of Jesus. Oh, woo! That's exciting! Because you can never see it all, but it's just wonderful to see more of the power and the presence of God. So if God's giving and Jesus is giving and the Holy Ghost is given, verse 17 says, even the Spirit of truth, that's what he's trying to pour into our our lives. What about man? Isn't it our turn now to say, Lord, if you got the ransom ready, what about us being willing to pour in to other people's lives? I'd like for our singers and players to come back to the the front here, if you would. It's our turn now. In Job chapter 33, we'll start reading in verse 23. I'd like for you to look this passage over one more time with me as we get ready uh, to make us a decision as we close this year out and getting ready for the next one. If there be a messenger, wouldn't it be nice if we could say there will be a messenger? If there should be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to shew unto men his uprightness. What he's saying is not everybody is going to talk to those lost people about Jesus. He puts it here in a percentage basis that's incredible. One out of a thousand is going to take time to talk to that person that don't know God. And friends, that's what God's called us. One of a thousand, Lord, let us, let us fulfill it. Look at verse 24. Then he is gracious unto him and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. That ransom is Christ. <clears throat> Verse 25, his flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. 
He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and notice here, here's that prayer of repentance. If any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. Boy, what, what glory is built just because somebody comes and talks to them and they say, you know what? I've been wrong. Isn't that precious that the Lord wants to use us to recapture the human race? Bring them back. Verse 28. He will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things work with God one time a year. Is that what it says? Oftentimes with man to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Would you stand together with us this morning? I'm going to ask him to play this old song here in a minute. It says, come unto Jesus, give him your life today. And my prayer is, I know the greater part of you have asked the Lord to forgive you. But if we could look at others, and this song could be ours, if we could just get them to come to Jesus and give them their life, what a difference is made if we can do that. I'd like for you to come and stand. It's probably, uh, you get dirty kneeling, but would you just come and stand here at the front this morning as, as we sing this together and make a commitment, Lord, that we want to be... We want to be messengers for you as we close this year out and into this next new year. Mm -hmm.